Hey guys, just a quick little video today. I wanted to show you how you can use smart objects in Photoshop to reduce noise only in the areas of the photo that you're actually wanting to reduce noise from. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So a great use case for this is going to be you know, wildlife photography, you can even use this in sports, but I'm also going to show you how this, this is going to be applicable to landscape photography as well. So I was editing this shot and I noticed that over here in the out of focus areas, we do have quite a bit of gray and I shot this at ISO 2500, plus it was underexposed by a stop. So that is technically ISO 5000 and you can do a couple things to reduce the noise in Lightroom, but I'm going to show you a better way inside Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and we're going to open this up as a smart object in Photoshop. So right click, open a smart object in Photoshop. Now when you open up a photo as a smart object in Photoshop, it gives you the ability to re-access that raw file. But the cool thing is, is that we can create a, a virtual copy, kind of. We can create a new smart object via copy, and we can have two different versions of that raw file and then mask them that back together. The way we would do that is we need to right click over here on our layer, and we're going to create a new smart ob object via copy. So now we have two of the same raw file here, and I can double click on either one of these and reaccess Adobe Camera Raw and reaccess all of our raw processing here. So the way that I want to utilize this is that we're going to have one version that is going to be for our in focus areas and another version that's going to be for our out of focus areas where we're going to add a whole bunch of noise reduction and remove the sharpness from it because we don't need to be sharpening our bokeh or bokeh. So I'm going to double click on our icon here which brings up Adobe Camera Raw. Now we can go into the detail tab here. We can remove the sharpening which instantly helps with the with the noise in the in the out of focus areas. But I'm also going to bump up the noise reduction quite a bit. Let's go up to uh, 54 or so. And you can see that it's getting nice and nice and creamy and zero noise in those areas. So we're going to hit okay. So now the top layer is going to be our zero noise layer and then the bottom layer is going to be our sharp layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a black layer mask on this top layer right there, boom. And now we're just going to mask in our out of focus area. So I'm going to start with a 100% opacity brush, start up here and I'll just paint in with a white paint brush. We'll start painting up in this corner. We'll bring it close. I can bring up my mask my visible mask just by hitting the backslash key, the one that's underneath the backspace key. And I'm going to bring it over as far as I can without overlapping anything important here. And leave this stuff like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a selection to guide us on this last little bit. So we'll go back to our layer here. I'm going to just grab the quick select tool, make a selection of this background. I'm going to hold down Alt and quickly mask out furry little friend here. We'll bring it in over back behind him, like so. On the back side, the fur is not as important as the front side. We want to make sure that we're not, you know, visibly blurring any of the little individual hairs and stuff. So what we're going to do is going to go up to Select and Mask. We're going to use our Refine Edge tool and paint over the hair on his little belly. And what that's going to do is it's going to take one more look at the selection that we have and it's going to remask those areas. We can also quickly go over our foreground here. This part doesn't have to be perfect because it's not uh, super sharp there anyways. The most important thing is to go around our little marmot friend here. And this is just going to serve as our stencil. So when we're painting on our mask, it's not going to allow us to paint into our marmot friend. We're not going to be adding any noise reduction to areas that we don't want to get soft. And even if it's not perfect, I'll just kind of make a mental note of it and I'll be careful up in this area here. So I'm going to hit OK and we've got our marching ants letting us know that this is an active selection. I'm going to go back to my paintbrush. I'm going to hit Control or Command H to hide our marching ants. 
Go back to our layer mask, hit B for brush, make sure I've got a white paint brush, and I'm just gonna finish it off here. So I'm gonna bring up, I'm gonna hit the backslash key and bring up our, our uh, whatever that is called. <laughs> bring up our, um, our mask here so we can visibly see where we're painting. And like I said, we need to be a little bit careful up in here around his head where our selection wasn't perfect. So I'm just gonna switch back to black, zoom in, and just remove that noise reduction from these areas here. Switch back to white, hit these areas, bada bing, bada boom, pretty close. Good enough for the sake of this tutorial. So if I zoom in here, we can see the before, got that grain, after, perfectly smooth, and we're left with the best of both worlds where we have a super tack sharp marmot and a nice creamy, soft, noise-free background. Just the way I like it. How can we use this in a landscape image? Well, one of the things that I like to do is I like to add noise reduction only to the shadow areas of an image because really the, the highlights are where you want want the image to be really nice and sharp but sometimes you can get away with reducing a little bit of noise in the shadows because the shadows are going to be the area where you notice the noise the most anyways so we have this image opened up as a smart object with a few raw adjustments already we're going to right click and create new smart object via copy. That is very important because you can't just duplicate that. Otherwise, the two layers are linked and if you edit one, you're editing both at the same time. So we have this top copy, which we're going to add our noise reduction to. So I'm going to go over to our detail tab and I'm just going to add some noise reduction. I'm not gonna go crazy because this image doesn't have a lot of noise to begin with. Uh, it's kind of not the best you know, example of this, but I just want to quickly show you what the technique looks like. So I'm going to put a black layer mask on this. I'm just going to hold down Alt or Option, boom, put a black layer mask on it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a luminosity mask that's going to restrict me just to the darkest tones, and we're going to mask in a little bit of that noise reduction just into the deepest shadows. So we're talking the trees areas around the edge of the photo where sharpness is not critical. So I'm going to try to find, using Lumenzia up here, I'm gonna to try to find a luminosity mask that's really gonna target just those deepest tones. Something like this is looking about right to me. Um, let's maybe try a dark six. Actually, let's go with a dark six. That's gonna restrict us to the deepest shadows in the trees and the deepest shadows in the in the hills here. So I'm gonna select this. We're gonna have that as an active selection that we can now use as a stencil as we paint through that selection. So I'm gonna grab a paintbrush. I'm gonna paint white. I've got white selected. If I hit Control H, you can see that we do have marching ants letting us know that we have an active selection. Lumenzia lets us know that by having the um, this stuff lit up green. And now I can turn on my masking preview, letting us see that we're actually doing something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell that I'm doing anything at all. And that's just going to allow us to paint into our deepest shadows. So if I go back here, do a quick before and after, before, after, it's very, very subtle and Frankly, in YouTube compression, you're not going to see what's going on. But if I look at my layer mask here, you can see that our layer mask is only allowing that noise reduction to go into our deepest shadows. So this is going to be very helpful anytime that you've had to boost the shadows more than you wish you had to. Maybe it's a high dynamic range scene. You can work a little bit of noise reduction into those deepest shadows. It's very, very powerful, something that I use fairly often especially if I'm going to be printing something because that's really when you're going to notice the noise the most. All right, so thank you guys so much. Hopefully you found this useful and we'll see you in the next video.